Hi, uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, so my name is Ignat, I work at Cloudflare, and today we're going to try to make Go to, as a scripting language, and to apply Go as a scripting language in Linux. So uh, a little bit about myself. I do performance and security at Cloudflare. Uh, I'm mostly working on infrastructure security. I'm passionate about crypto, and I also enjoy low-level programming, digging into Linux internals, uh, drivers, firmware, and other like very hidden things. Yeah. So first of all, why? Why do we want to do to use Go as a scripting language? When I present this idea to other general developer conference, I have to persuade people like I, we need to do that. But hopefully, this is a Go conference, so you should be really excited about it, right? Because you like Go. But anyway, um, first of all, it's like Go is probably easy to learn, write, and read. Uh, Anyone here had any problems learning Go, like, or like, took them too long to learn Go? No? Yeah? Uh, secondly is Go has a huge ecosystem of ready code. So it's very handy because you don't have to always write your code from scratch. It, you can, there are a lot of, like, tons of code available on GitHub and it is easily available, you can just go get it. And moreover, it's very useful like in multi-user environment because if you set up your scripting framework in Go, you don't need any administrative privileges to actually download dependencies, uh, unlike some other scripting languages, which is very handy from security perspective. Also, Go is compiled and strongly type language. Like, how many of you had this problem where you want to do some kind of maintenance on your machine and you write like a 500 line bash script, you run it and it fails in the middle because you made a typo somewhere, right? And, and now you're, you didn't do your maintenance but your system now is in like in this intermediate broken state and you have to roll back manually whereas if you use Go scripting, hopefully if you make a typo, the compiler uh, it's uh, it will be a big chance that the compiler will probably catch it before you even start executing your stuff. And also, like Go, Go is low level enough for system tasks, so it makes it a perfect scripting language. Uh, the feature I like about Go is it um, has more than easy integration with C code. I had a personal, I not personal. I had a task of like writing a simple program which parses PCI option ROMs. And I first started doing it in Python, but then I realized there is a like a custom compression which can be applied to compressed code in the PCI option ROMs, and the, the code is only available in C. And I, it took me like two days to translate it in Python, and I was only halfway through. So I was like, I scrapped all that, copy-pasted the C code in the Go file, wrote my logic in Go, and the task was done in like, 30 minutes. So. so what are potential use cases? So for example, you can have a Go build system for your project. If you have a complex Go project, most likely you use some kind of build system because just plain Go build is not enough for you. And there are different build systems. So you can use Make, you can use some Python based build system, but why do you need a, like a Python build system if you have a Go project so you can have a pure Go build system which builds your Go code, which is handy. Um, quick Go code prototyping. So many of us have this like extraordinary idea and you jumped into your terminal, like start doing code and you want to test it, then you see there is a flaw in your logic. So you, you write your code, you compile it, you run it, you see there is a flaw in your logic, you go again, change your code, you compile it and, and like this iteration cycle, you can short circuit it by if you have a like, if you can just plainly execute your .go files, you can, you're skipping one step. You're like, you can quickly prototype your code without doing all these manual button pushes. In terms of like server management, sometimes it's very handy to have your scripts not as program but as scripts, like in textual form, because most likely uh, you will 
you will stick them into some kind of configuration management system. And nowadays, configuration management systems have really powerful templating capabilities. So if you don't have your script in source form, you cannot easily template it and tweak it to each specific deployment. Well, anyways, Go and Python are very similar in, in, in what in what they can do in the availability of code and everything. So I would say, like, anywhere where you use Python, you can try to use Go and maybe you will have some advantages. Like, Python is a scripting language, I mean. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's first try to understand what environment do we need for a proper script to run. So we need probably three things. The first is operating system. Second thing, you need a programming language to, have, to write your scripts in. And finally, you need an interpreter, which will, in, well, you execute your script, the interpreter will interpret you, the code you wrote and like do, do the things you wanted it to do or, or what you wrote. So for the purpose of this talk, our operating system will be Linux because, well, it's probably the real operating system, the only real operating system out there, right? <laughs> like a programming language is obviously GoLang on the Go conference, so like there is no choice here. But what about the interpreter? Like, how can we interpret Go files? And like, if you know like the standard Go installation, you have this tool called Go Run. So maybe we can try to use that. Right? Let's see how it works. So this is. Um, Plain, I call it simple toy Go script, but it's like a Go Hello World program. We can copy paste it from the Go play, Playground. The only thing you can take away from the slide is probably how to properly write the Hello World string. I see many examples of people like not not writing it from uppercase H, omitting the comma, or, or, or <laughs> omitting the exclamation mark. It's all not correct. Like you should write the Hello World string like this. So yeah, um, and yeah, well, let's try to use it as a script. So let's try to execute it with go run. You just run go run hello script dot go, and you see your hello world. Seems seems fine, right? But a script is a bit more than just a simple hello world program, right? So what what do you need from a proper script? Like probably not much, but you want it at least parse the command line arguments, because most likely your script will accept some of those. Uh, the second thing, you want it to return proper error code to the operating system. So it's very often you integrate a script as like a big pipeline where different scripts communicate with each other, like you pipe in a shell or where you call it. And yeah, error codes are the way how scripts communicate with each other and the outside operating system, right? And finally, what you want from script, you don't want to type go run uh, with each go file. You want, you want script to be just directly executable, right? You want to assign an executable bit to your go script, and you just want to execute it, and it should, should just work, like Python. So let's a little bit modify our toy go script. So we. It's the same Hello World program, but it accepts one optional argument. So if you uh, pass it as a string, it will replace world with your string. So you can pass it in a name, hello, someone. And if you also pass it a special keyword fail, it will fail with a non-zero exit status. And the exit status would be 30. So don't try to interpret what that code means. It's just like accept that it's 30 for now. And how do you execute your Go files directly or any other scripts in the operating system? The typical way to do that is using a shebang line. Who doesn't know what a shebang line is? Yeah, so the shebang line is, if you take any text script, it's the first line, it's usually the first line in the script. You can see it, it starts with a hash and an exclamation mark and it, specifies the path to the interpreter the operating system should invoke to interpret your script. So basically, it tells the operating system which interpreter to use to parse that script. And if you read online, many people say it tells your shell which interpreter to use, which is not technically correct. I will explain it a bit later. It tells your operating system. 
So let's try to add a shaban line to our Go script. So it's our sample toy Go script version 2. Just we add a shaban line at the top. So exclamation, uh, hash, exclamation, pass to Go, and we just add Go run. So let's try to execute it now. I mean, I would rather do it as a live demo, but you won't see the shell on, on the back. So I, I just typed it in. But everything is copy-pasted from a real shell here. So, uh, so yeah, let's try to execute this file. And if you do that, you will see this weird out. OK, so what happened here? Uh, the problem here is our Go run tried to compile our Go file, but Unlike many other languages, hash is not a valid comment in Go. So any other interpreter will interpret the shebang line as a comment, but Go will not. And even, there are some even languages like JavaScript and Node.js where hash is also not a valid comment, but it still works because the Node.js makes a special exception uh, for the shebang line. It ignores the shebang line starting with a, like the first line starting with a hash. But Go run doesn't do that exception. And people have asked uh, like, um, the maintainers to add that exception but uh, in 2014, I think. But the general response that was that GoRun was not intended to be a proper script interpreter for Go. So yeah. OK, if you have a hard problem, you, you ask the community. So people try to solve this problem by asking questions on Stack Overflow and what Stack Overflow guys came up with is they say, like, screw that shebang line. Let's try to exploit the pro They're smart. They're really smart. They try to exploit different properties of the shells. So if you don't specify a shebang line, the shell will just try to execute your text file as is, like line by line. And uh, conveniently, you can specify file path uh, you can replace forward slash with double slash in Linux, and it will still be a valid file pass. But conveniently, double forward slash is a valid comment in Go. So what they came up with the idea, like let's say we replace the shebang line with very similar thing, but a little bit different. So they replace the hash and the exclamation mask with double forward slash, and they also add this weird appendix. Uh, so the script will be invoked properly as a typical script in the operating system. It, so it looks like a Sheban line, but it's actually not. It it's just exploits some properties of the shell. So let's try to execute it now. And now we will also pass it one parameter to see if the parameter parsing works. And you will see something like this. So. You see, it did execute something, but then there is like crap appended to the output of the script. So what happened here? Um, the good thing is like the script was executed, and the parameter passing worked. But the bad thing is that the shell tried, like after executing the first line, the shell tried to execute the rest of the Go file like line by line. It just tried to execute the source code at the commands, which is not good, right? So Stack Overflow guys don't give up. <laughs> They're smart and like that. Yeah, we can fix this. So what we will add, we will modify our shellism line and add this thing at the end. So it's like a second command, which will terminate the shell execution with the error code from the first command. Cool. OK, let's see. Uh, if you execute this, yeah, nice. Um, there is no extra crap. It all works. Uh, now let's try to verify if we get the proper error code if the, your script fails, right? So we send it the fail keyword, and you see like this. So you still see that the script was executed. It failed, hello fail. But you also see some exit started 30 line appended to your output, and you don't have any code for that. And if you check the real exit code of your script, it will return 1. 
So what happened here? Uh, the script was executed, this is good. Parameter passing worked, and the shell terminated properly without any crap appending. The bad thing here is that the go run, for some reason, masks the real. If, if your file, go file, has a non-zero exit code, go run will mask the real non-zero exit code and will always return one. And also, it will append to the output your real exit code with the exit status line 30, which is not what you want. You want like you just want if your script returns 30, you should get 30 on the, on the in the operating system, right? Stack Overflow guy say, yeah, we can fix it. <laughs> so we will add. Uh, I'm not even just for. Uh, I mean, their solution they proposed was like too complex, so I just replace it with pseudocode, but they say we will add code if the error start is non-zero, we will pass the exit status output, then remove it from the output and rerun the exit status. But like, I mean, Go is all about simplicity, right? And like, th at this point, this solution is just too complex. And imagine you're like, if you use a script at work and you have a new newcomer and he will just don't understand what that means. Why do we need all this crap? Like, just compared to a simple Shebang line, which is understandable, right? And so, yeah. But even if you accept the complexity, there is another problem with this solution, which is not actually explained online much. So let's go back. Let's accept that we accept this solution and let's try to execute it again. So if we execute this file directly, we get our expected output. However, let's try to execute this file not from the shell, but from another process. So imagine you have, I mean, this is a Python example, but it can be any other process which calls like exact system call with your script, right? And if you do that, you will receive this error, which is basically the operating system uh, will say exact format error, which means the operating system could not execute the binary you requested because it doesn't know how. And why is that? It's very, it's, we need to have an overview how Linux execute files. And if you're looking for a job, by the way, you now have to pay attention because this is a typical interview question. <laughs> so imagine you have a user process and that user process wants to execute another binary. So what the user process does, it issues an exact system call and it specifies the binary it wants to execute. In this example, this is some, some Python script, foo.py. And this exact system call is getting forwarded to the Linux kernel. But Linux kernel can execute many different formats, right? Uh, so Linux kernel has different implementa different modules, and each module knows how to execute a specific format. So it has a format for a out uh, executables. It has a code for to parse and execute elf executables. But because Python is a script, uh, so it will be forwarded to that magic module called bin format script, which is surprisingly responsible for executing scripts on your system. And now, this is what I've asked you to, follow, uh, to remember. The shebang process, what this module basically does, it processes the shebang line in the script. So shebang processing, the parsing of the shebang line, does not happen in your shell. Your shell is not aware of the shebang lines at all. It, the parsing of the shebang line happens inside Linux kernel in that specific module. So when the call will be forwarded there, they will uh, process the file, they will see that it's a Python script because the shebang line asked it for, to be interpreted through a Python interpreter, and it will launch a process which through the Python interpreter. So that brings us why our, our solution, shellism approach, didn't work, because when we called, when we issued the exact system call outside of shell, and we use shellism approach, uh, the operating system didn't find any shebang lines and it didn't know how to process a plain text file. The operating system doesn't know how to do that. So the difference between shellism approach and a shebang line, shebang script can be executed from any environment, but shellism processing happens inside the shell, so only shells can process these magic lines.
Okay, so shellism approach is not good for us. So let's try to go back with shebang lines. So we know at this point that go run is no good. It doesn't return exit status code properly and cannot process the, the shebang line. We know shellism lines are no good. They're cumbersome and non-intuitive. They do not work outside of shells. And it's like they're exploiting capabilities of most shells, but it's not guaranteed. It's not standardized or anything. So it even may not work on some shells. So surprisingly, when you have, you ask something to be added to like a core framework, like go run, but you were denied, people just say, okay, it's open source, we'll do our own tool. So people came up with a tool called, surprisingly, go run, which is not go run, but like go run, which basically does all these things go run does not do. So it consumes and processes shebang line. I mean, it just ignores it basically and thinks that it is a comment. And it returns proper exit status without appending all this crap. So, okay, let's try it now. So it's version five of our toy go script. So we will just add a shebang line calling this custom go run. Uh, binary, which can basically, you can get it just by doing go get. Okay, so we're very close, right? So, yeah. Let's execute the normal case with the custom parameter. Yeah, we have the normal output. Let's try to fail our script. We see hello fail, no extra things appended. And let's check the exit side. Sorry, it's what expected, right? Let's try to call our script from another process. And it works because now it's a pure shebang line and the kernel knows how to interpret it, right? And finally, like imagine you're in a UK use case that you do the quick prototyping thing. You like it all works now as you expect. And now you want to compile it to a true Go program and you do the go build your script and you, it will fail. <laughs> yes, and it will fail because, because you still have the hash, right? Like we overcome the go run, cannot process the hash uh, because it's not a valid comment, but we cannot build these files because the, we, we, we can't modify the go compiler, right? To ignore the, well, we can technically, but it's, it's very cumbersome. So yeah, it seems that there is no ideal solution like overall, but but maybe we can come up something specifically in Linux because Linux is the only real operating system. So if you go back to the process how Linux execute files and you see all the different modules you have, the one interesting module like, and the modules are called like bin format prefix and the thing they can interpret. And surprisingly there is like, there is a module called bin format misc, which means like everything else, right? And the good, the good point about what this module allows you to do is allows you to register custom executable formats from user space. And so you can basically define your own custom interpreters for specific executable and scripts. And you can pinpoint your custom executables by either by file header or by extension. So in our case, we're interested in extension. We want to execute that Go files. And surprisingly for a Linux kernel feature, it has great documentation where you can read online and like understand how it works and I, this how to configure it. But uh, I'm just giving you a quick one-on-one -on -one here. The way you operate the bin format misc module is you interact it with a special virtual file system. You need to mount it first, but if you use a recent, recent systemd-based Linux distro, systemd will do it for you, so you don't even have to care about that. And the, th the only thing you have to do, is you have to describe to the Linux kernel which files in the system should it interpret and how to interpret them. And you just echo a specially formatted string to this special file in the special file system. And it's all documented in this documentation. So just a plain example. First of all, we just verify we have the bin format misc file system mounted. If you just run this comment, you will see that systemd did it for us. Nice, good systemd. And you just echo this line. It's actually copy-pastable, and you can do it on your system. So 
the line looks like it's like has segments uh, separated by columns. So the first segment go line is just a tag. The second uppercase E means you you want bin format mask to target files by extension. The third segment means which extension it should target is go because we want to execute that go files. The next section is you specify which interpreter you want to use and we will use our custom go run module. And the final picture is special flags, but uh, I will not explain them here, but you can read about, they're needed and you can read about them in the documentation. So if you do that, all of that, uh, so what happens in ac uh, under the hood is when the user process tries to execute the .go file, it does an exact system call, it gets to the Linux kernel and it being forwarded to the bin format miss kernel module. So the, depending on configuration, the bin format module will read either the header or extension. It will check its internal database for the registered format. So in this case, it will find that we ask it to interpret Go files via the, our custom Go run interpreter and the Linux kernel will do, will spin up the new process, which will be like, look like this. So go run with our .go file. And it's all, again, it happens inside the crib. So let's test it. So a simple toy Go script with nothing. This is like a plain Go program. Uh, the one we started before without any shebang lines, quirks, or hacks. It's just a Go program, right? And if you register the format, let's check if it works. So parameter passing works. Failure works, checking the error status, it works. We get our expected 30. Let's try to build this file and it builds just fine because it's a valid Go program. There is nothing special about it. And if you also call it from another process, it will exe be executed uh, properly because now the, all the logic happens inside the kernel and regardless of the environment you called your script from, the kernel knows how to process it. That's it. <laughs> so here are some conclusions. Uh, I claim <laughs> that Go may be useful as a scripting language. I, do you agree? Who disagrees? Anyone disagrees? Uh, unfortunately, standard Shebang line is not compatible with Go. Um, according to Go maintainers, Go run was not intended to be used as a proper Go interpreter. And actually, I don't even understand then why do we have Go Run, but yes. Uh, uh, but we have Go Run, our custom tool. And bin format mask is a neat Linux feature you can, which can help you to solve the above shortcomings and turn Go into a, a true scripting language. And finally, like bin format mask is so cool and flexible, so if you just like replace Go with something else, you can turn Rust into script in IC, plus plus, Java, Haskell, Scala, whatever. Actually, like even for Java, uh, if you use like Ubuntu or something, you may notice that you can um, execute jar files directly because there is a package which provides the bin format registration for .jar files, so you don't have to execute your jar files through the Java uh, command. Yeah, so check it. Here are some useful links. So the first link is the original blog post which forced me to do this small research. And like that blog post describes all the shellism and shebang approaches and it stops at the point, okay, we, can, we can't have a perfect solution. Uh, we can have either like Go scripts but they're not properly compiled or, or vice versa. That's where my blog post picks up and say, no, you can do it in a normal real operating system in Linux by using this cool feature. And uh, the last one is just, we repeat the uh, link to the kernel documentation for the bin format misc module. Yeah, this is like some happy customers who are using bin format misc. Uh, yeah, so don't take my word for it. Like people are, are really find it useful. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes?
don't you don't you need the right access to the uh, directory to make go run works uh, you mean the custom go run yeah and and uh, the executable so if i remember the details of how this go run interp uh, implemented i think it tries to compile your go file under the hood and put it into temp directory and it also uses some kind of a cache there so if you like execute the same script twice and there are no changes it will just like not recompile it but i think it uses temp directory by default but i'm not sure like i just i don't remember anyone else Anyone else question? Okay. Thank you again. Thank you.